Uh, I think sometimes some of the hardest things for me to look at is to really go, oh, I don't know, out into the street or the city and to look around and consider the people. You know, to do like Jesus did when he sat up above Jerusalem, you know, on a hilltop above the city itself, the city of God, the city that had the name of God, the city that was reputed to have the very presence of God in it. And the whole world had known of it. And yet Jesus wept because of the people in the city. You know, and sometimes I feel that way when I look at the world and I think, man, Lord, are you really going to wipe it all out? Are you really going to take away all this stain that humanity has placed upon your creation? All these buildings and structures and things that we think is so beautiful that you're going to annihilate technology and technocracy because it's so evil that it's taken from what could have been enjoyed freely and become enslaving us to our own sin and it's just corrupt because it just doesn't work in the long run. It works for a short-term fix, but it doesn't work in a long-run eternal way. And I think about all the people that today, you know, that either haven't heard because we're told statistically that 95%, which sounds exaggerated to me because, you know, it's probably off, the 95% of the people haven't shared Jesus with somebody. And then I look at the people and I think, Sometimes when I look at them, I realize they don't want to know. The world is coming to a place where it will flat out, even if it saw Jesus face to face, does not want the Son of God. Bluntly, people want to sin. People have no heart anymore that resists the desire for sin or to corrupt or to be evil. As a matter of fact, there's a desire to become more so than less so. People want to be more violent than less violent. People want to kill than not kill. People want hype than peace. They want ecstasy as opposed to joy. They want that immediate gratification as opposed to endurance. And they reject the whole idea of suffering for anyone at all. The sorrow that I feel and the sadness is that when you come to a place that you want sin more than God, then God will give you over to sin and let you have it. God help us that we never find ourselves in the same place. Because when you do want that more than you want salvation, you won't be saved. You will be condemned. Men in love with sin do not receive Christ. Men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. I do not believe anyone has ever rejected Jesus on philosophical grounds. Israel did not reject the Lord because of philosophical reasons. Israel's rejection was for moral reasons. The man who continues in his rejection of Jesus has a pet sin somewhere. He's in love with iniquity. He likes to sin. He rejects Jesus on moral grounds. It's too personal. It's come home to him. And then hides behind false philosophy, philosophical grounds. I believe that every one of those who are having a intellectual difficulty is hiding because he is morally reprobate. He is a sinner, and he knows it. When we fall in love with our sin, we can imagine and manufacture good word, 10,000 syllogisms to keep us away from the cross. <laughs> Those are interesting points of reference within a precept that's inside of a philosophical statement to create some idea that we think we can excuse ourselves from the reality of facing the fact that we are sinners and we need to deal with that sin. A blind man can argue that there is no sunshine, but when he gets his sight, the sunshine floods in. How wonderful it is that when a person gives up his sin and puts his pride under his feet and looks at the light, 
the whole body, the whole mind, are flooded with light. I have talked to people who have come out of rationalism and atheism and all the rest of their isms, and they smile at you with clear eyes and say, oh, it's wonderful now, the light has flooded in. Jesus said, for everyone that doeth evil hateth, <coughs> excuse me, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. This is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. The natural man has a perverse antipathy to the light, because it interferes with his iniquity. In other words, people, all of us, don't want to be found out. And the reality of Christianity is we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As a Christian, we are mandated that if we are in sin, to confess it, to bring it out, not to run from it. Because the light is shining. It's obvious before God what you are. But whether you've accepted his forgiveness for who you are is a whole different story. And the reason why people reject God's provision for sin is because they know bluntly what they are doing and they have chosen to do it anyways. That is the tragedy. That is what will send someone to hell.